Jitendra Shriram, Managing Director and Head of Research at HSBC India joins in. Good morning, Jitendra. Uh, very good to have you on what is a crucial moment for the markets uh, after that heady rally on Friday afternoon. Well, I'm going to ask you a trading question. I know you, know, you look at uh, uh, the view beyond, but uh, still, uh, with, with your kind of experience, uh, will it be merely catching up the breath and waiting for the actual numbers here after? Or do you think the, mar uh, the markets will still dare to take uh, uh, even more serious long positions this week? Well, I think it's uh, difficult to keep on uh, uh, building expectations on the back of, you know, uh, a same uh, kind of news flow which is coming in. See, the market will need incremental data to mm. move up. And I would uh, strongly suspect that, uh, you know, if you go back to history, last elections, 225 seats were decided by a margin of less than 40,000 votes. Ooh. I mean, this year also, if you take 8, 15 million voters and 65% uh, average voting rate for India, you're talking of about 540 million voters across a like number of constituencies. To keep the math simple, it is about 10 lakh voters per constituency. I would just say that, you know, 40,000 is too critical. So, you know, to dictate whether it is going to be 210, 250, 290, whatever, uh, it is going to be a very difficult task for anybody to guess. Mm. So, I would still suspect that it is going to be much more driven by the final event and uh, it is going to take some more data points and do uh, keep in mind that there are two economic releases coming through this week which are critical. One, uh, the manufacturing output today and the WPI inflation on Wednesday, both of which may not be too comforting for the market. So I would still uh, advise caution ahead of this event. Okay. Jitendra, hi. Good morning. In fact, uh, you have been a bit cautious, you know, the last time we spoke with you as well, you were indicating uh, some amount of nervousness. But, um, uh, you know, just a hypothetical situation, what could the worst case be on the downside? Uh, suppose there is a, a, a resurgence of BJP's old guard if Modi uh, fails to, cap, you know, to, to get the seat tally above 200. Um, in that case, uh, the BJP still forms a government but with a different leader. Suppose that happens, then what could the downside be for this market? Uh, in terms of a disappointment? Well, I uh, seriously think that is not going to be a very relevant thing because if you look at the party president's uh, clear uh, messages that, you know, barring uh, Mr. Modi, I don't think they're lo looking at portraying anyone as a prime ministerial candidate. So I guess the key call would be whether it is, uh, you know, uh, about 200 verdict for the BJP as opinion polls indicate or will it be south of that? You know, all those equations will come to the fore only if BJP standalone does not manage to get say 200, 210 odd seats uh, as uh, indicated by the opinion polls. So I still think it's a low probability event but yeah, you're right in a sense that if uh, such an event were to come I guess it is important to then read into what is market pricing in now. Very difficult question but overall I would still estimate that going by the kind of momentum that the market has seen, the kind of euphoria that is built up, I would still reckon that you know market is at least pricing in some kind of a uh, you know that with a few alliance partners probably the NDA is in striking range of forming a garment which uh, you know could be belied if that number is a lot uh, south of that. Mm -hmm. uh, well uh, Jitendra therefore what's the in-house view in terms of uh, what more gains are there in the market or how much more gains are there in the market assuming the market gets what it wants uh, uh, you know the, the, the NDA gets uh, over 250 say. Well, I would uh, still say that, you know, uh, uh, you know, we don't have any recourse to surveys that we can really predict with great accuracy. No, absolutely here. not. I'm but just assuming. But the fact assuming. is that, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, if your assumption is true, I would still say market, uh, you should be, uh, is probably pricing in the near term gains already. The reason for that is... Uh, you know, you have, you come to a valuation level which is already probably at about, you know, 16 times forward earnings. This year is not going to be very rosy in a sense that even if, uh, say, the NDA as per your assumption comes into power, the first year will be one of repair, uh, you know, whether it is to get the fiscal consolidation back on track. So you'll have a year where you'll have policy rates remaining tight and you'll have fiscal contraction. It can't be great news for corporate earnings. Mm. Now, how much do you re-rate a market in anticipation of 16? 
one and a half, two years in advance is a difficult call to take. The the second uh, thing is, uh, do be aware that the Aussie Met Office last week has already raised, uh, you know, this year's uh, uh, monsoon to a El Nino alert level. They are talking of a 70% probability of an El Nino. Even the Indian Met Department is talking of a 95% probability of a normal monsoon. So, the, the I mean, 95% of long-term average being the monsoon. So, I would still say that the, the like likelihood of primary article inflation coming off clearly appears weak. So I wouldn't go out and uh, do a broad market trade at this point of time. But yes, there will be one big trade which is there still waiting. I don't think market is yet positioned, which is a rotational drift. Market is still quite positioned in favor of the defensives, i.e. the staples, the healthcare, the tech sector and so on. Whereas it is quite empty in terms of ownership of high beta names in uh, industrials, materials and so on. You could have a rotational shift which kicks in because because market is expecting a slightly more pro-investment oriented policy and so on. So to that extent, I guess the, the market could alter its focus areas going forward and you could see more returns being made in the higher beta names rather than in the low beta defensive spectrum. Okay. Um, just just one more follow up to once the new government is formed, the post May 16th, if Modi comes to power, what are the few, uh, you know, the, the initial things that um, Modi should do or could do that could further bolster this rally on the upside? Well, first of all, I would say is that, you know, uh, energy is probably the quickest win for the market. In a sense, uh, already the UPA in its final year has done third, you know, 12, 13, I lose count, but uh, number of petroleum price hikes. Now, reducing that under recovery to near, uh, uh, on diesel at least to near zero would be the first task of any government to make sure that you create plan ammunition for more developmental spend rather than wasting it on, um, you know, subsidy on diesel and stuff. Now, the second part uh, is obviously trying to incentivize domestic production, whether you do it through NELP rounds in energy, whether you do it through defense, moving it from uh, export purchases to internal purchases and so on. So these could be easy wins because you're talking of flat budgets and then substituting that expenditure from out, outside to inside India. So you automatically trigger domestic manufacturing as well. So these, I guess, would be easy wins. You don't require too much of, you know, environmental issues to contend with. You don't require too much of plan spending to require uh, to be required here. It's already part and parcel of the budget right now. So I guess these are the easy wins. Uh, the second part is uh, going to be a lot more tricky, which is, you know, what you do about projects which are stuck up, whether it is NPLs on banks, whether it is uh, metal names which are stuck with, stuck up with projects and stuff, how to clear those. I guess those will be the medium term triggers. And longer term clearly is to try and get generate more employment and stuff, which will take a lot more time to sort out. And one part to again keep in mind here is that uh, this is a Lok Sabha election. You don't instantly see the correction happening in Rajya Sabha as well because that's a two-year rotation, you know, uh, when one third of the members will retire. Mm -hmm. So it will take time for the incumbent, uh, incoming government to actually get a majority. So passing non-financial bills is going to take a lot more time than what market expects it to happen.